Sidekick 64, a versatile software-defined cartridge for the Commodore 64. Let's get started. The PCBs I'm using for this build have a black solder mask, white silk screen, and ENIG surface finish. Now is an excellent time to hear about the sponsor of this video, PCBWay.com. Order PCBs with a range of colors and surface finishes to choose from, with prices starting from as little as $5 US plus shipping. Not ready to try out your own designs? Then be sure to check out the shared project area where you will find plenty of retro designs and inspiration. Need a professional 3D printed case for your project? Then look no further. PCBWay.com have a range of 3D printing technologies to satisfy your printing needs. PCB prototype the easy way with PCBWay.com. It's recommended to start by soldering the surface mount components in place first. So I began by applying solder paste to the pads on the PCB. Notice that it's not necessary to be too precise. Once the solder paste had been applied, it was then time to place the components. I began with the resistors and capacitors. After that, I placed the ICs. I decided to leave the LEDs until later, where I would hand solder them. This is based on a previous experience, where I ended up melting some LEDs using the hot air soldering station. Pay attention to the orientation of U2, as it's the only IC that's facing in this direction. After I placed the components, I gave them a once over to ensure that they were all in the correct location and that their orientation was correct before applying the hot air. It didn't take long for the hot air to cause my mat to start expanding. So I tried placing the PCB on a sheet of cardboard, but neglected to take into consideration the cardboard's combustibility when exposed to extreme heat. Anyway, after the cardboard started smouldering a little, I ended up placing the PCB directly on the metal stand of the microscope. It is necessary to short these pads on the rear of the PCB to connect the power to the display. Short them according to the order of the power pins on your display. Next, I soldered the 40-way header in position, followed by the switches and then the surface mount LEDs.
I then soldered the display in place. The software for the Raspberry Pi is available for download from GitHub at this URL. Scroll down a little and download this zip file or whatever is the latest version of it. Once downloaded, extract the zip file. You'll then need to copy all of these files onto a FAT32 formatted micro SD card. Here's my micro SD card. Any games that you want need to be copied into the appropriate folder. So here in the freezer folder, I've placed the action replay cartridge. In the D64 folder, I've placed a selection of disk images. One thing to note is that I didn't have any luck getting Sam's journey to load using the D64 images, and I'm not sure if the sidekick supports multi-disc games. I did, however, successfully run the cartridge image of Sam's journey. The Sidekick 64 also has a SID music player, so place your SID files here. Before connecting the board to my Commodore 64 and powering it on, I thoroughly inspected it for shorts. I then connected the Pi Zero and powered it on. I was met with both good and bad news. The good news was that the board appeared to work. The bad news was that my display was damaged and I needed to order a replacement. Several days later, With the new display fitted and the board appearing to function okay, I connected it to my C64, prayed to the 8-bit retro gods to keep my C64 safe, and powered on the board, followed by my C64. Once the Commodore 64 is booted, you are greeted with the Sidekick 64 menu. Press F7 to enter the browser. Navigate using the cursor keys or joystick to the desired folder and game. Here's a CRT cartridge image for a recently released game, to load, just press the return key. ED18. Pressing and holding this button resets the C64 and takes you back to the browser. Next, I'll try a D64 disk image. Note that I wasn't able to load Sam's Journey in D64 format, and I'm not sure if multi-disk support is available. Pressing the M key mounts and loads the selected game.
there is a built-in SID player. The function button on the Sidekick 64 behaves as a freeze button when running an appropriate freezer cartridge image. Let's take the Action Replay cartridge for example. The function button is the one on the left and pressing it brings up the cartridge's freeze menu. If you are going to use the Sidekick 64 as a freezer cartridge, then you'll need some other way to load your games and what better modern way than with a Pi 1541 such as the one I built in a previous video. In conclusion, I thoroughly enjoyed the build of this cartridge, and for me it definitely fills a hole in my Commodore 64 collection. For me that's mainly freezer cartridges, although it also offers a fantastic way of playing modern released games, especially in cartridge format. Of course, much credit goes to the designers of the Sidekick 64 for this fantastic design. Click here to learn about the Pi 1541 disk drive, and click here to see what YouTube thinks you will enjoy the most next. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to stay up to date. Until next time, take care.